Good afternoon. It's great to see a lot of you back to our series and to those who are new, welcome to the Take Your Job Search to the X Level presented by General Electric Credit Union and the Xavier Leadership Center. Both organizations share a mission to serve families, individuals, and communities across the greater Cincinnati region. We're excited to do that through this eight session series to help you learn what works and what doesn't directly from professional career coaches, human resource executives, and hiring managers who work with some of the area's largest employers. For today's session, we ask that you use the chat feature for requested exercise feedback, questions, and comments. We will have time at the end of the session for question and answers, but feel free to submit your questions as the session moves along. Today's session, Effective Job Search Activities and Networking, is led by our partner, Annette Ballard. Annette is a certified career coach with two plus decades of HR experience. She's helped C-suite executives, those in transition, and those looking for that key promotion. As a strengths-based leadership coach, she has helped thousands discover their true aspiration and soar to their dreams and purpose. Her specialties include career coaching, public speaking, group facilitation, talent management, strengths analysis, and discovery. Annette, thank you for being with us today sharing, and sharing your wisdom and experience. Thank you. My pleasure to be back with you. I want to ask a question, and do you find yourself just staring at your computer screen and a blue hue of creating a glow around you? Do you find yourself doing the same job search tasks day after day and don't know what else to do or what else you can try? Are you seeing the same leads over and over? Let's stop here because you will need some paper and pen, pencil. And um, I'm going to ask you to think about of which activities does your job search consistently consist? And I'm going to ask you to think about that as a comprehensive overview of all of your job search efforts. So if you'll take a moment and just begin with a list of what you're currently doing in your job search as you um, are today. So I'd ask you, how do you know if you're getting good results with your job search efforts, with your investment of time and energy? Are you getting pinged? Is your phone ringing? You're receiving emails? If your resume is working as it should and your LinkedIn presence is working like it's designed to, you should be hearing from employers. Today's session is all about what you're doing in your job search those specific activities, your strategies. Hopefully we'll be able to contribute some ideas and we may just be reinforcing what you're already doing, providing some tips of effective job search along the way. We'll talk about the whys and the how to's of organizing your job search. And we'll talk about networking because this is what I hear from job seekers. They'll say, well, they got a job at fill in the blank. They knew someone there and well, that's true. And then there's that whole thing of six degrees of separation. So let's do what Mark Twain said to do and let's eat the frog first. Strategic to an effective job search is attending networking events and gosh, it's easier now than ever. But not just noticing where they are, but what those groups can be. So why don't we like networking? What are those things about networking that we don't like? And why don't we do networking and use that as a tool in our job search. You know, an effective tip is to use meetups specific to your industry. And I like meetups because they're traditionally employed folks. You can try meetup.com, Eventbrite, and search for areas in your area of expertise. And there's some great job search groups in the Cincinnati region Job Search Focus Group, Northern Kentucky Accountability Group, Journey to Hope, that's on the Cincinnati West side, just to name a few. 
And perhaps you know of some other specific job search groups that may be of value or benefit. Let us know and share that resource. Now, this is an Annette thing. And I would encourage you to not say, I'm in transition or I'm looking for my next opportunity, but rather say, I'm actively engaged in my job search. I say it every week, I know, but one conversation really can change your life. So when you're networking, it really boils down to this one question, and that is, who do you know that I should speak with? You know, I admit there's some validity to our dislike of everything in our job search and that networking component. But when we're in a networking environment, why don't we enter with the mindset to see what we can do to help someone else? I'm an introvert. And if I go to these events with the mentality that I can perhaps be of help to someone else, maybe that's a resource to share. Maybe that's somebody I know that I should connect them with. But maybe it's not the who that you need. Maybe it's more of a what. So it may be beneficial for you to schedule or conduct an informational interview where you can get some insights into the industry or some insights into the culture, maybe some feedback on your LinkedIn. You might ask me, that's great, Annette, but who? So I would recommend maybe check in with someone who's just recently been successful in their job search and landed, and then mimic what they did. Maybe it's somebody who's retired recently from the organization that you may be interested in being a part of or someone who's had a successful career in the industry that you're headed towards. So I would ask some specific questions, but I'd also ask like, what would you tell me or what advice would you give me? And I'd recommend that when you request these that you would ask for 15 minutes. People are busy and if you ask for 15 minutes, honor that 15 minutes. So when that 15 minutes has expired, look and go, wow, our time has evaporated. And I just want to say thank you. I appreciate that the time that you've invested in me today. And I want to honor your time and just say thank you. And oftentimes what you'll find is people will prolong that conversation. Because remember, at the heart of this, people want to help people. And then it's so cool at the end, if you'll just say something like, you've been such a help to me, I'd like to help you. How can I help you? And then whatever you commit to do, follow through. And if you really want to impress me, send the thank you note. To me, there's just nothing like taking the time to thank somebody for helping you through that process. I want to float a thought and I want to challenge you today to treat your job search like a job. Wow, life gets in the way. So I've got to take my pet to the vet, my mother-in-law to the dentist, I'm going to help my neighbor move, I've got children doing school at home. Don't you know life happens right in the middle of whatever else you have planned? So I recommend that you get dressed when you get up, like you're going to work. Block some days and times of the day to focus on your job search efforts. Now, and an effective tip, you may want to consider an email account that is just for job search so that you're not distracted when you open your email and see that there's a shoe sale at DSW this week. We want to create some tasks and goals and we're going to conclude today's session to make this really actionable for you. And consider to be successful in launching your job search like a job is having a dedicated workspace. And I know space may be at a premium. So maybe it's setting up a TV tray under the stairwell, or maybe it's setting at a table out on the deck but find a dedicated space for you to be able to work and concentrate on your job search. Treat your job search like a job. Now the next 
that I'm going to share with you is startling. I'm going to tell you to keep your seat belts buckled and your seats in the upright position because this is going to involve math. And I'm going to ask how difficult or how much work is finding a job going to be? I want you to write this down. 200 equals 7 equals 1. 200 equals 7 equals 1. There's a job search group in New York City. It used to be called the 5 o'clock club, and they're the ones that came up with the statistic. They're now called get5.com, and I'm not validating. I'm just letting you know where I got the source of this information. But they say that it takes 200 resumes submitted to get seven interviews to result in one job offer, and that in a healthy job market. 200 resumes sent to get seven interviews to get one job offer. I'd ask, how many resumes or applications have you submitted yet this far? And if you want to do yet more math at your current rate, how long will it take for you to get to your next job? I can tell you it's a lot of focused work. You're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs. I think this picture is actually a toad, but you get it. See, don't be discouraged when you get no's, when you get an email that says that they're not moving forward. Just understand and know that you're closer now than you've ever been to your yes. Orison Marden said that a good system shortens the road to the goal. And one of my favorite job search resources is a book um, from Richard Bowles, and he updates the book every year, and it's called What Color Is Your Parachute? And more numbers, so please, no moving about the cabin. We're going to talk a little bit of more shocking numbers as we move forward. And we're going to talk about the least effective job search methods, and I'm going to move then forward through to what he lists the most effective of job search methods and strategies. So let's take a look at these. Using the internet to find your job. 4%. Really? 4 out of 100 people found their job simply by using the internet in their job search. He says that mailing out resumes to employers at random is 7%. So 7 out of 100 people, that's how they found their job. Answering ads in a professional journal or um, a trade journal that's appropriate to your job goal, 7% of folks found their job that way. 7% of people found their job by answering ads in a newspaper. Like, who reads the newspaper now, right? But there, that's one of the ways that folks found their job. Going to a private employment agency or search firm for help, between 5 and 28%. The 28% is more of an entry-level position, and the 5% is for the professional. Attending a job search support group. 10% of job seekers found their job. 10 out of 100 people, that's how they found their job was attending a job search support group. Go into places where employers pick out workers, such as union halls, 14%. 14 out of 100 people, that's how they found their job. Asking a former teacher or professor for job leads, 12 out of 100 folks found their job that way. And going to the state and federal employment office, 14% of folks found their job that way. Now, these are just standalone, right, statistics, but I want you to see when I flip the screen to the most effective job search methods, watch what happens. Asking for leads from family, friends, and people in the community, 33% of people, 33 out of 100 people found their job that way. So, just an effective tip, you may want to just message people on Messenger or send email out 
um, text messages that just let people know I'm actively engaged in my job search and this is my job goal. It's just, just a tool. Um, next, knocking on the door of any employer, factory, or office that interests you, whether you, you know whether or not they have a vacancy, 47% of folks found their job this way. So here's what I would say to you today in the COVID environment. First of all, make sure that you create your profile and apply online, and then um, get dressed, drive to the location, walk in with your resume, and um, give it to the gatekeeper. And they're going to tell you what? They're going to say, you have to apply online. And I would say, well, thank you. I've done that. I just wanted to stop in today, um, introduce myself, and drop off my resume. So when we do this, they take your resume like on a silver platter and go dun da da dun da da dun da da dun and it goes right into the hiring professionals. You're, it's just a way to stand apart. 47 out of 100 people, that's how they found their job. And then the last statistic is researching to find companies that exist to create a target list of prospective employers that are um, hiring for the type of position that you do and do well. Um, 69 out of 100 people found their position that way. So I'm going to talk about that target list and we're, we're going to shake that out. Um, but think about how you're spending your time. Ask yourself, am I investing my time and efforts and energies in the right job search activities? Let me just give you an effective tip. If you're staying in the field that you're currently in, you should spend 60 to 80% of your efforts with the post of job leads. Um, and if you're transitioning into a new field or you've recently graduated, you should spend 60 to 80% of your efforts networking and creating profiles on target employer sites. I would like for you to consider to tweak your job, your mindset so that your job search is like a job. So when we think of a job search being like our job, think about project management. And I'm going to show you something I did, and it's not sexy, um, but I want you to see what I created, and that's just a spreadsheet. It's, it's not fancy. I would propose that we spend time working on our actual job search rather than spending hours making this pretty. My gosh, it doesn't even have to be an Excel spreadsheet. You can use a spiral bound notebook or the back of a scrap piece of paper, but tracking your job search efforts is gonna be really effective for you. And I, I'll just talk through what I have across the screen. So you'll wanna record the position. What's the name of the position? Does it have a, a position code number? What's the company? The date that you applied for the position? And then I would recommend that you, as you customize your cover letter and you customize your resume, you should have a unique file name. And I probably, my personal opinion is not to put the company name, but maybe it's, it's A3 or B6 or whatever that collates with the number here on your spreadsheet so that you know exactly which one you sent to them. Uh, your LinkedIn connections, what do I want you to look for there? Like look to see if there's somebody you know that works there currently, someone who used to work there. Uh, maybe you can drill down even on their um, LinkedIn page and find the name of the hiring contact because when you talk to someone you likely could benefit from knowing someone's name. Um, so make sure that you're clicking on when you're at, poised at this juncture. I want you to also click on the employer's company LinkedIn page because they can tell that you've looked at them. Make sure that you write down the date of your phone interview and the names of the folks that you interviewed with, your face-to-face -face interview and the, the date and the names of those folks, and then the follow-up for that. We're going to talk about, that's our next topic is follow-up calls. Um, but if you are the type of person that likes an electronic version of this job search um, spreadsheet, for lack of a better word, there's a 
company called Hunter, H-U-N-T-R dot C-O. I did not mistype that, but um, it goes along with my, my life motto, if it's free, it's for me. And they allow you to do 50, I think, for free before you have to pay for that applicant tracking system. And it's a really cool tool. So um, these are just some options for you to use to become more effective in your job search efforts. So I want to ask you, are you making follow-up calls? You don't have to answer that. Probably not. But it's key to jobs, effective job search. So I want you to share with us, why don't we want to make follow-up calls? What is it about follow-up calls that we don't, why we don't want to do it? So if you would put your response there in your um, chat box, and Carol will share with us your responses today. Why aren't we making follow-up calls? Why don't we like follow-up calls? What challenges do we face in follow-ups? So great responses. I do have, um, I, I do make them, but only if I have a name. Uh, I don't want to bother people. Um, people are still chatting here. Um, I hate to make phone calls. It feels like I'm bothering them. Uh, difficult to get to the decision maker. You never know where the call really gets at the organization. Uh, makes me nervous to talk to the person with all the, uh, especially the decision maker. Um, failure, uh, fear of failure. Uh, seems like they, the calls seldom work. Mm. So I, so maybe some frustration if you're making calls and nothing comes from them. I, sure. I can imagine. Um, is it better to email or call first is the question. We'll talk about that. <laughs> These are good, Great. really good responses. Um, all of all of that, absolutely yes. Um, I to answer and to speak to the question: Do we follow up with an email or do we follow up with a call? Um, I try to think of what everybody else is doing, and then I try to do something that's maybe going to set myself apart. Um, I. I don't know if I'm allowed to share with you a name of a company, but they absolutely won't consider you if you don't make a follow-up call. So um, if you apply, and even if you're a great candidate, if you don't make the follow-up call, that's not the, that's not the profile of the candidate that they're looking for. So I would encourage a call. And my staff will tell me that I'm pretty pathetic when I make a follow-up call. Um, but let's, let's start kind of at the beginning and, and hone our response. So this frog that Mark Twain told us to eat, we're gonna eat this one too, and that's follow-up calls. When to follow up, three to five business days after you've submitted an application or after you've created a profile. And I'd like to start with what not to say. And that is something like, yeah, I'm calling to check on my application, and would you give me a call back? Um, it's kind of going to just go nowhere. So I'd like for you to consider embracing to position your call like this. So here's, here's Annette's language, but I would say, hi, I just wanted to connect today. My name's Annette Ballard. I applied for the administrative position on August 31st, and I'm just curious as to where you are in the hiring process. Two parts to this that I really like. One is curious isn't like, can I say this, you morons, you don't call me back and I don't even know why I bother with making the call. You know, nobody, don't get an answer from anybody. Rather than that mentality, hit it with, I'm just curious where you are in the process. And they have to tell you a little bit of a story when they respond to that. It's not a yes, no, and you're not checking on you, you're checking on their process. And then if you actually get to talk to someone, say something like, I don't know if you can tell me, but in, in light of COVID, what is your hiring forecast? A great question to engage them in conversation, not just I'm calling to check on my application status, but asking them, what does their hiring forecast look like? And then state, I'm 
actively engaged in my job search and your organization, whatever one you're talking to, is one of my target companies. And then I, my language is, I wonder, what would you tell me? What advice would you give me? Just ask them and thank them. Wish, tell them, have a good day. So then you say, oh, Annette, but you, know, you never got anybody on the phone. And I know, I know, I know, I know. So leave in a message. And it's going to be kind of similar. But I just wanted to connect with you today. My name's Annette Ballard. I applied for the administrative clerk position on August the 31st. And I'm just curious where you are in the hiring process. I'm engaged in my job search. And your organization is a target company. I know you're busy. But I would love to have a chance to talk with you. And you can reach me at your number and then repeat that number and say, thank you. Have a great day. So acknowledging they're busy, acknowledging that you would like, well, love to have a conversation with them. Remember one conversation can change your life. But here's the thing, to catch a fish, you have to put your pole in the water. We need to have the right lure to catch the right type of fish. So like if you want a bass, you have to have something on the hook that the bass want. We need to know where to fish and how long we need to stay in that cove before we pull up the anchor and move to a different spot. What if we think of job search as multiple poles in the water at the same time? So we looked at follow-up calls as a pole in the water. Let's talk about keywords. So in the spreadsheet, you might want to add another column and that column to include keywords. So identify some tight job titles and some roles that you would like. And, and as we talked about last time, ONET is a great resource to find um, related job titles. You know, different organizations are going to call the same position something totally different. And an effective tip is not just to limit our keywords to job titles, but perhaps to software packages or equipment or verbiage that's unique to your specific industry. You know, recently I attended job search focus group uh, and um, I heard one of the graduates come back to say that the, how she just landed her job was she changed her keywords and just that one simple tweak made all the difference for her. So I'd ask you what keywords might you add? And as keywords come to mind, just jot them down and keep them in the spreadsheet so that you can reference them. And I know that you're checking job posting sites. I know that. Um, but which ones? And I, I want to kind of paint a little scenario here. But Ohio means jobs are free for employers to post a job opening. Whereas, and a little bit of research, and please don't hold me to this, but the little bit of research I did said like, Monster was like $375 to post a position and LinkedIn, I think is double that, plus they have a pay per click. And when we are not going to Ohio Means Jobs for our job search, we might be missing some employers, some smaller employers that don't want to or can't incur that fee. So um, a strategic tip is to always check Ohio Means Jobs. You may find things posted there that you won't see anywhere else. You might tell me Indeed carries those over and I understand that process, but I know for a fact that you'll find things there that you won't see anywhere else. You know, just a reminder, employers are getting slammed right now with applicants and it makes their process even more difficult. And your response to this challenge is to be thinking outside of the box. And beyond job posting sites, do you have job alerts set up? I hope you do. An effective tip is to apply from the positions that are recently posted. So employers will say, um, I'm going to post this position and then I'm going to allow, I'm going to say 80 applicants, cut it off at 80. Now, sometimes it feels like you are just putting your resume in a black hole and it could be because if that window has closed in the time that the number of applicants have been submitted, it's for not. So 
I would encourage you to apply earlier than later. And so if you see positions that have been out there five days, seven days, it might not be a good use of your time to apply. Um, maybe that is a target employer and maybe you want to throw that on your spreadsheet so that you can check back to create a profile on their site. Another poll is I'm going to give you more numbers and that is I'm going to direct job seekers to start a list of 200, yes, 200 employers that may be a target for them. Why do I want you to do that? Because I never want you to sit down in front of the computer and say, there's nothing else to do. I've done everything I know to do. There's nothing else. So to build this list of 200 employers, I would encourage you to go to the Business Courier Book of Lists. They're expensive, but um, I went online, I just Googled Business Courier Book of Lists and I was able to reap some benefits. I don't know how deep it'll let you go before it wants you to pay, but um, check in the area chamber of commerce and not just the Cincinnati chamber for their business member list. You can have access to that, but also the area, the smaller communities will have their own chamber. Go to superpages.com and search for your skill set within your geographic location. And just driving around and notice buildings and um, it's really, this is what sales professionals do to find target leads. So I'm going to share a quick story. I'm watching our time, Carol. I'm having a blast. <laughs> but um, I would tell you to apply on their site, even if they don't have a position opening. So here's why. It says to the employer, you really want to work for them. I had a client who had a master's degree and we were looking for a pretty high level scientific position. And I, she had mentioned a target company that she'd love to work. And I said, why don't you go ahead while I'm working on some target lists with you, why don't you go ahead and go to that company and let's go ahead and create a profile on their page. And she clicked on it. She said, and that there's no positions listed. And I said, go ahead and create your profile. And like a three-year-old, I, I mean, she really visibly was aggravated with me, but she said, it's going to take me 45 minutes. And I said, I know, but go ahead and do it. So as we, she finished that up and we finished up our coaching session together, her phone rang. Who was it? It was that employer and that employer offered her an opportunity to have a phone interview and then a face-to-face. -face. And she's at, all these years later, she's at her dream job because she wasn't competing with a bunch of other folks. And she, by creating that profile, she was stating, this is an organization that hires my skill set that I really would love to be a part of. Where do you have your resumes posted. Um, again, I want to say that wherever you have your resume posted, you need to update it. I don't know if any of you have been on the back end where you can look at candidates, but absolutely, it, your eyes will roll back in your head. It is so boring to look at like a page of 25 resumes. And when I've done it, I get back to about seven or eight pages at the most. So if you've uploaded your resume to a site, I'm going to say three weeks ago, you're probably like on page 45 and you're, nobody's going to get back there to you. So what Annette does is I have, I save two different versions of my resume, really just a different file name. And every week I upload the, the different resume that's exactly the same, but a different file name. And then it moves me to those first few pages, which is going to ensure that when an employer pays to see the back end of where the um, candidates have uploaded their resume, they're going to see me. So it's effective to get back on top of the stack. When we talk about SMART goals, I'm going to ask you some hard questions. 
how long are you just going to look at job postings? Like how much time? I know it's easy to spend 45 minutes just looking at job leads and not apply. Maybe there aren't positions posted right now in your area of expertise. So pull those, that poll, if you will, of the 200 targeted employers and maybe pull the networking poll out too. Let me ask, is this you? Do you talk yourself out of applying for jobs? I would say if you meet 70% of the requirements they're asking, go ahead and apply for the position. Listen to me. Let them disqualify you, not you disqualify you. So as you think about a SMART goal, I'd like for you to think about how long I'm going to just sit and stare at the computer without applying and what other poll I may need to be able to pull out to be effective in my goals. Now I'm going to ask you to answer this question and throw in the chat box, if you will, your response. And that is what job search activity has been the most effective use of your time and your energy? What would you tell us has been really the most effective use of your time and energy in your job search mechanics and those tactics and strategies that you're using? What's working for you in real time? We'd love to hear what you have to say. So attended a virtual conference in my field. Mm. So some Good. networking there, I'm sure. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Um, cultivating contacts in my field or at the particular company. Mm -hmm. Good. Really being strategic. Updated some old skills. So kind of uh, refreshing on your strengths and skills. Great. Absolutely. Great move. Good, good, good. Anything else? Um, they're still coming in. Okay, Let's I'll see. give them a minute. Yeah. Uh, becoming involved in extra committees and projects in my company to network with others. Perfect. I love that organic volunteering that can absolutely result in an, an opportunity just to network. It takes the kind of the sting out of it, paying forward. Good. Yeah, great. All right. In the interest of time, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to ask you some really important questions. When we're measuring the return on investment, I'd like for you to write down what is working in your job search right now for you? That's gonna look different for each person. What's not working? What, what dead horse do you need to dismount? What are you doing that's not effective at all? What would you identify that perhaps you should do more of, that it's, wow, this is a good use of my time and I perhaps should do more of this activity than I have been doing. And then here's the one I want us to talk about in the chat box, and that's this. What else? Do you ask yourself, what else can I do towards my employment goal? What else can I try in my job search? So what would you contribute with some job search efforts that you're making that perhaps we've not yet mentioned would you share those in the chat box? What else can you do potentially that maybe we've not already mentioned? Putting on give your it, thinking cap. Give, huh? give people a minute to think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I find with jobs, seekers that it, we're just saturated with all we know to do and um, asking what else can I try? What else can I do? So sharing what we might be able to try 
um, and shoot, just giving it a, a whirl and see what kind of measuring, what kind of return on investment that we have. So, so we, yeah, so we do have some coming in now. So develop a marketing plan mm. and a marketing profile different than a resume. So nice. that goes back to our earlier sessions on your brand and your, you know, online presence. So great. Developing a, a marketing plan for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you don't know how to do that, maybe getting with someone in the, that has a marketing background might be a way for you to think outside of the box. Great, great response. Thank you. Appreciate your contributions. Powerful. So I want us to really start at the beginning. And I know this is going to take more than a couple minutes that we'll provide here. So yeah, this will be homework. But I want you to write down your gut answers to these questions. Please don't overthink these, but get real with yourself. Where, where are you? Are you caring for a parent? Are you balancing children at home and school? Are you continuing to work while doing a job search simultaneously? Or maybe you're continuing to go to school while doing a job search? I challenge you to analyze what's really possible for you in light of your life circumstances. Honestly, can you give 40 hours a week to your job search? Let's create a job search campaign that works for you. I'm talking about all of the poles in the water. So as you look at this slide, what time of the day are you committing to your job search? How much time are you gonna spend on your job search? What, what days of the week are you gonna spend on your job search? Which job search groups or meetups should you perhaps give a try? What about researching to create some target companies? How many target companies do you want to add to your list each day? Who can you schedule a networking meeting with or an informational meeting with? As you look at your LinkedIn process, in your presence there, what, what day are you going to concentrate on your LinkedIn and how long are you going to give it each time? What day are you going to refresh your posted resume and what day of the week are you going to do that and how often are you going to post the updated resume? I'm going to give you a moment and just a few, maybe take a screenshot of this We'll send it out too, just so everybody knows. Yeah, so spend a little bit of time and I'm gonna play this music for just a few moments. You know, Carol and I have discussed this, but you may be doing all of the activities. You're, you're looking at job postings, you're perhaps attending networking meetings, but ask yourself, am I completing the functions that'll help me land a job? You know, the picture there on the slide is um, called downrigging. And um, I've been out on Lake Michigan with friends downrigging. And the concept to me and my limited knowledge is that we have multiple poles in the water. And in our job search, just like we increase the likelihood of catching a fish with multiple poles, the more poles we have in the water in our job search, we're going to have opportunities then to 
potentially snag hiring opportunities. So I'd say to you, work the plan. The plan works. I'm going to challenge you to get through your nose quicker. I'm going to say kiss the frogs. The faster you kiss the frogs, the faster you get to the prince, you get to the yes. I love this uh, scene in Finding Nemo where all of the fish are swimming together and as they get that momentum, the, the net breaks. And, you know, today in our topic, my hope is that you get some momentum in your job search. You get some traction in your job search with an organized goal-oriented process that you'll start to feel the wind beneath you. And I wanted to mention too that as I speak to hiring professionals, which I do weekly, I ask them directly their hiring forecast for the rest of 2020. And I'm told that Q4 will be warm. So that's October, November, December. And traditionally, Q4 has a slow hiring trajectory. But as the market does begin to ramp up, you're going to be in the queue. You're going to be doing the right things. You're going to have the right mindset. You're going to have your brand positioned. You're going to have your resume and your LinkedIn presence working for you. And you will be setting yourself up for success. I love what Eleanor Roosevelt said. She says this, it takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. And I want to leave you with some thoughts today before we move to questions. And that's this. This will be part of your takeaway card. But consider treating your job search like a job. And I've said it before, but your job search might be actually harder to do for you than the work that you'll be doing once you're hired. Remember, 200 equals 7 equals 1. 200 resumes submitted, 7 interviews, 1 job offer. That's the math. Kiss the frogs and kiss them fast. <laughs> Get your poles in the water. Do some downrigging in your job search. Work the plan because the plan works. I want to remind you that next week we will um, have Jason Nargang do the finding potential job opportunities, which will parlay so well with what we've talked about today. And that'll be September the 10th. So we want to make sure that you mark your calendar now to be a part of that. And before I end, I want to just say thank you. My Thanks, Annette. Uh, we do have a couple questions coming in. One is um, on the follow-up piece. What if you're currently employed and you're nervous that you your follow-up will be with people that know people at your current company? So searching for a job when you already have a job and then putting yourself out there and with that exposure. What do you think it's about that? So sticky, isn't it? And um, traditionally what I say is I'm, I'm sure you'll understand, but I'm going to ask that you keep this in confidence. Um, if this is something that you can keep between us, um, certainly you understand. I appreciate that you will keep this in confidence, um, but those follow-ups, that's going to be have, on a case-by-case -case basis. You'll have to weigh that if you know those individuals and the impact of that. I never want somebody to quit their job before they have a job, certainly. So um, I don't want to put you in a precarious situation. So um, trust your gut and, um, and, and don't put yourself in a situation where you're setting yourself up to fail. Great, great, it's thanks. It's not easy. Yeah, it's a balance. Um, and then is another question is, is there any reason to avoid a professional recruiter? Hmm. I'd say no, but that, that gets muddy because we will apply for a position and then the recruiter will also present us to an employer and we can cross apply and can eliminate us as a candidate. So when you speak to a recruiter, make sure you know who they're submitting you to, and then make sure that you are not double submitting. And if you have double submitted, that you disclose that. Um, 
I would say that we can't sit back on our haunches and let a recruiter do all the work for us. I think it's got to be one of the poles in the water. Um, and sometimes recruiters understand they've got a quota and they're taking calls and they're making calls. And that's just because they have to do X number a day and they can potentially waste your time. That may be one of the things that you say, mm, I, can't, I can't give my time to that. Um, you know, one thing I um, kind of breeze through was when you post your resume, don't have your phone number on your posted resume so that recruiters only can reach out to you through your email and that can help kind of budget or guard your time. So hope okay. that helps. Great. And then uh, our final question is, um, how do employers look at someone that's been unemployed for maybe a year or more? Um, and I think that probably goes back to telling your story, but um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? So there is a story and people remember stories and it resonates, stories resonate with us. So remember that, that in that cover letter, that's the place. And then your um, tell me about yourself. That's the place to share your story. Um, certainly, if you can highlight things that you've been doing during that time, if you can talk about the silver lining in the cloud, if you will, um, and certainly in light of COVID, we've got a little bit of a margin of grace, if you will, with employers because they get it. They totally understand. Um, sometimes when someone's been unemployed for I'm working with someone right now who's been out of the job market 22 years. That's, you know, a whole different song and dance. So um, specific to just being a year, tell your story and be honest and forthright. And um, it, it shouldn't be a, only just a hiccup, perhaps. Great. Be honest. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Annette. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, General Electric Credit Union and the Xavier Leadership Center, thank you for joining us. And we hope that you're walking away with things you can put in place immediately. Um, you will receive an email with a printable card with takeaway messages and a survey about your experience. And we welcome all feedback to continue to improve weekly. To sign up for the next webinar or to listen to the recordings, please visit gecreditunion.org or the xavierleadershipcenter.com. Again, I'd like to thank GECU, our presenter Annette, um, and for the partnership in providing insights to assist you in your job search. We'll see you on September 10th for finding potential job opportunities. Have a great weekend, everyone.